It was a little cool this morning. And so I decided maybe I'd tackle the garden. We've let it go for a couple of weeks. Moosey has not been able to get outside and we've had a terrible heat wave this week. Ooh, the sun went in for a little while, right behind some clouds. It is a beautiful day. Uh, today is a no makeup day, except a little stuff on my eyes because perspiration, as I discovered in the last video, just melts the cream blush and I did have a primer on and I could see it on my cheeks. It just kind of bled all over the place because I was perspiring and I do get hot. And I also have my, my outdoor hairdo for the summer. It keeps the heat off the back of my neck and it's my little ponytails. I have my overalls on too that my daughter Dubby gave me and I will do a long shot of these. These are garden overalls that come from a catalog and I will put the name of the catalog underneath the uh, photo. And they have flowers on them. I can keep all my goodies in the pockets. They fit nice and loose. You should get these if you're a gardener. They're so cute. My shirt is a Walmart shirt that I bought. It was either early, had to be the spring sometime, or could have been last summer. I also have a yellow one, which I've worn so much. I love these because they have the turned up sleeves with the tabs and they look so cute with pretty much everything. So we're gonna go in the garden. What I really have to do this morning, right now, is cut off some of those poppies. I saved the tops because the poppy seeds are in those little buds in the top that I will use again next year. We did get the poppy seeds and they were just tiny seeds from uh, one of my son Billy's friends up in Idaho. And Moosey planted them, I guess in the fall, I can't remember when we planted them, but um, we had the most beautiful pink poppies. And now the poppy season is over. So I'm gonna cut them and then uh, preserve all those little stems with the, the uh, spent buds on the top. I also wanna tackle some of the bougainvillea tubs in the back because some of the bird seed has corn in it, little tiny corn, and it looks like we're growing some corn stalks. camera doesn't respond to gloves so I have to keep taking the glove off to activate it. Okay, to tackle the poppies. These, believe it or not, have grown from seed and up here I'm going to show you and when I get a bunch I'm going to show you what the, the little seeds look like. They call them pods, I guess, come to think of it. This is what it looked like after the each poppy grew. And the poppies were all um, a pink variety with a beautiful purple design on the inside. And every one was identical. That's the fun part about a poppy. Interesting how they grow. So here are the pods. And these are dried already. So I will put them in my patio potting shed and save them. And when I cut some of the other ones over here in the back, you can see how big they are. Maybe you can, but we'll plant all these seeds again. I can't remember whether it's fall or spring. Moose will know. And then we'll have poppies again. So that's my poppy caper. Now these poppies I'm going to leave because there's still some green on them and I might get one or two last poppies. Well, I've been doing pretty well, but I can feel the perspiration dripping down my head. So I do have my daylilies starting to bloom. Beautiful orange ones 
And over here, a beautiful deep wine color. What do you call that magenta? My poor St. Francis statue was beheaded by either a, a deer or some animal that ran through the garden a couple of weeks ago. See my poor St. Francis. Uh, it lasted for so long on top of the, the uh, bird water fount, but I can glue him together with that um, 6,000 glue. He'll be okay. When I went to feed the birds this morning, I realized I was out of bird seed. But then this afternoon, it's about three hours later, I found some more in the back of my car. We're gonna do a little bit of bird feeding. Normally, my little granddaughter, Shannon, does a lot of this for me because Bill gets nervous when I'm in the uh, garden walking between the plants on the stepping stones that I'm gonna fall. And I, and I am very careful now because I have fallen before, but the birds are hungry and I do have to feed them now. So I'm gonna pour some into this pail, 20 pounds, let's see. Now what I do is I add some black oil sunflower because the birds just love it. And as you heard in the uh, gardening part of the video, the birds and the singing are just, it's worth it. <laughs> So I'm running low on my black oil sun, sunflower seed. I'm going to add some little by little. They love it. So now you probably can't see, but I'm going to mix it in just a little bit on the top. The feeding pattern is very strange. This, this is one of the last things they resort to. So I'm gonna fill this up. Once all the other ones are gone, then they start on this. Why, I don't know. But I do have to use the funnel for this. Otherwise, we lose a lot of bird seed. Fills up quickly. It's all ready to go, as you can see. And you can see the black oil sunflower seeds in there. This is one they love. It's on the left-hand side of the garden. And this one is one to go first. Now, we are thinking that maybe the doves and the pigeons during the night get to it because sometimes I can fill it later in the day, like right now, and in the morning, it's almost gone. Now we get the wrens and the robins, and um, sometimes the blue jay comes and eats this, but you know what? Our blue jay comes in here and eats Shamu's cat food. Go figure. Okay, this one I don't need this for. Just gonna fill it up. They smell it, and then they start feeding, and it drops down. Before you know it, it's gone. This we call copper top, and this one sort of hangs out over the railing a little bit. And once again, it's a popular one. Mother Margie puts her hummingbird feeders, uh, sticks them with a, a suction thing right on her bedroom window, and you believe they come right up to it. Now, I do need to use the funnel to fill the blue house because it goes right down the chimney. As you can see, this bird feeder doesn't open up. Hey, Shamu, what you doing? Where's your pal? Shamu has had a friend. Now Shamu is fixed, so he doesn't really know the difference, I guess. But a long time ago, I would say about six months ago, we had a family, a wild family, a mommy, a daddy, a couple of babies, that came up from down below and they were very protective of their babies. Now, unfortunately, the babies probably didn't survive up here, but we did put out food for them. And in the end, we, we have this one beautiful gray cat with, a, with white paws and a white tail that is a wild cat, but I've been making friends with him because he comes around every morning and he recognizes the way I speak to Shamu. Now, I know you might laugh at that, but when I say, Mom, good morning, he hears me. And he comes running from wherever he is 
and I'll put out food for the two of them and they share it. They'll sit side by side in the daytime, but mostly he'll disappear again and come back in the morning when he hears me getting ready, no matter what time, whether it's six in the morning or 10 in the morning, he somehow hears me. Now, Shamu is very, very nice about sharing food. You'd think with a wild cat, he wouldn't be. So whether that means it's a he or she, I'm not up on all that, but at least Shamu has a friend. Now, Ghost has started to let me just slightly touch him while he's eating on the top of his head, but somehow he sort of jerks away. I guess it takes a while to, maybe never, to um, tame a wild cat. But we call him Ghost because he appears only once in a while. Do you see Ghost? He came in for an afternoon feed. He heard me around here. Hi, Ghost. How you doing? Come on to Nanny. He's cool and he just wants to chill on my patio. And here comes Shamu to see his buddy. Ma! Hello! Yes! Come on! Can you see how cautious he is? Whoops! I do want to show you what the lesser goldfinch feed on. Now these are little small birds that are yellow and um, the females have a little bit of green on them. They're not quite as pretty as it goes in Birdland as the male, but they feed on what we call socks. Now these are pretty grotty now. They're empty and they only eat Niger seed. It looks like tiny black rice. It's also called thistle seed. You can get Niger or thistle and that's all that they'll eat and they pick at it through the holes in these socks. Now, someone has gotten to these besides the tiny birds because they never put holes in these socks. So someone else has decided they like thistle seed or Niger seed, and we have to buy some new um, socks. So let me show you how I feed these. Well, I just checked the tubs and it looks like we're out of the pure Niger seed or thistle seed, which is all black rice, little tiny things. However, I did find this a few weeks ago when we were, when the stores were out of the Niger and the thistle. I'm surprised because that's quite a bit expensive and I didn't think most people uh, fed these little lesser goldfinch. But I found this, which is a blend. Uh, it says finch will love it. And it's a blend of the seeds that they love, plus some other very tiny seeds. So let's, uh, since they have nothing in their socks, I'm going to feed them this. Now, the way we do it is I use this vase and I put the this in with it. And I'll start with the white one, <laughs> but I think it's gonna start going all over the place. We probably losing a lot of seed because of these big holes. So I stick this into my vase and this goes in here. You see Shani has been feeding this. So she's been using some of the seed. I'm gonna show you. Can you see those tiny little seeds? Normally I just feed the black ones, but they seem to be liking this. When they don't have the premium food, they, they like this. So we're gonna pour it in goes into the sock, little by little. Maybe I won't fill the socks up because, there we go. I wonder if it's falling out. There we go. I'm not gonna fill them up all the way because I don't like the, the holes in here. Maybe next week when Moose is a little more mobile, we can go to this lovely little bird feeder place and maybe it'll be open. It's the most beautiful, uh, everything to do with birds from uh, bird houses and food and, and perches. And it's a it's an antique Victorian style house, a blue two-story house over in uh, Orange County. And 
it's just glorious to walk through and see everything in there. And that's where I buy these socks because they're the quality socks. Now, the last time we went, they had tables set up outside because of COVID, but maybe now they're open. That would be a treat. And I will film that if we get to do that again. Okay, one down, put that over here to go out. And I'm gonna fill one more, which you don't have to watch. how fast they come look at that poor little things must have been starved don't want to scare them away see how tiny they are sweet little things they're lesser goldfinch and they seem to like the food it does take them a while to find the blue house but tomorrow hopefully I'll get some more seed those little birdies are still eating away over there. <laughs> you can see it's time to feed the hummingbirds too. So I will also be doing that tomorrow and maybe I can add that onto this video if I don't post Saturday. I also have the gazebo and the red top to fill up. They love that. The woodpeckers love the gazebo. Ooh, do you hear that breeze? It's beautiful. And over here, we have little red barn acre. My lilies are still blooming voraciously and I'm still getting another one. We plant these in um, segments so that maybe two weeks apart so that you have gladiolas blooming all summer. I do use my uh, basil and cilantro and chives all the time in my cooking. So I keep them out here in the front. I keep Margie's little plants that she gave all of us. She makes these little resin holders here, but I have to transplant some of those more basil, which I constantly use, and my strawberries are doing pretty well. This beautiful old stone rock wall was built at the same time as the adobe, so it's 80 or 90 years old, and it's sort of a rock garden for me. The soil is bad. It doesn't grow too many um, things that need a lot of care, but it does grow a nice patch of thyme and oregano for me constantly which I use a lot of this in the winter time it's more for soups and things and I do have some mint the mint will take over the garden if you don't keep getting it taken back here's my succulents these are so easy to grow and pretty various other wonderful things in here my nasturtium this year did not flower the way it usually does usually it's just blooming all over the place, but lovely and pretty colors. So these are all the puppy pods I collected and I will put them in a jar, join some of the others that I've already picked. Look at the big ones. See, these are really filled with seed. They'll dry all winter and then um, next summer or next spring, we'll plant them again. I think I've had it for the day. It's very cool in here on the patio. And as you can see, the perspiration is forming on my face. So I don't want to get overheated also on my forehead. It's so cool in here in the shade. 
and I'm going to stay in here for a little while. Put my little plants and flowers around in here. I don't know when I'll get this patio finished, but I did have to uh, clean it a little bit again for the day that we had our new baby great-granddaughter coming. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed our work day together. I wish you were here in person to help me. I could have gotten more done, but you know when it's time to quit, when the perspiration starts running down your cheeks and your eyes, time to come in the patio, take a break. I so enjoy all your comments. It's, it's, it's as if we have this, this thing going back and forth. Like right now, we could be sitting here having iced tea and just enjoying each other in the garden. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it so much. Bye for now.